Welcome to Detroit Catholic Central, home of the Shamrocks. Established in 1928, Detroit Catholic Central is ready to unveil to the world a new cornerstone of academic excellence. Welcome to the George and Mary Turek Hall of Science. Hi, my name is Ed Turk. I'm the president of Catholic Central High School. I'm from the class of 1985, and I graduated from the building in Redford, Michigan. So uh, George Turk engaged us five years ago uh, about helping the school. And as we looked at our master plan and some of our needs, one of the first things we decided was that we needed a new building to house our STEM curriculum. My name is Amy Ely, and I'm the director of STEM here at Detroit Catholic Central High School. By dedicating the George and Mary Turek Hall of Science, named after his mom and dad, he's leaving a huge legacy here that's gonna help make the future of our young Shamrocks, as well as people out in the community. Because the George and Mary Turk Hall of Science isn't just for the young men of Catholic Central. We also wanna make sure that it's a hub for community outreach. So George has actually been involved with Catholic Central for a long time. He started back in the late 80s by helping us with logistical stuff, uh, computers, phone systems, helping us to give us the tools to be successful. So he's been with us for a long time. So in 2017, George came to us and told us he wanted to do more. He wanted to invest in Catholic Central to make sure it was successful for the next 100 years. He really wanted to leave his legacy. He laid down the mandate of, we're going to build the greatest hall of science in the world. Right, and so when, when the main donor and leader of this lays down that type of mandate, it trickles down to everybody. That was the standard that we held ourselves to. Every decision, whether it was five a day or 20, visiting a set up CC for the future. And so everything we did, every square inch, went through a fine tooth comb three times over with those things in mind. And so there's just an incredible amount of pride and excitement of when this building opens up, just the things that we can't even imagine are gonna happen in these walls. They've done a very good job of trying to identify um, Catholic Central people to work on this project. That's been a point of focus in every trade category. Uh, that's how we became involved through my sister Valerie. And beyond that, the trades that we've gotten have really put their very best people on the project. I'm extremely blessed. My two children went here, um, Joe and Jonathan McKeegan. Um, 15 and 13 graduates. So I can't even tell you what it means to our family to have been a part of this. This is just one of uh, many projects to come and George really wanted to set the bar high and push us and that's what he did. The meetings were always productive and we'd sp spend a lot of time in talking about what the mission is. Um, Sandy, Mike Oakley, Ed Turk, extremely good leader, very good communicator. You know, he's always the cool hand, right? Just keeping a uh, level head you know, being able to cut through the noise and make a decision under pressure and guiding us in the right way. He's been just absolutely critical in leading us in this project for the last couple of years. Getting the right people together and getting them into, you know, a team and then watch that team uh, execute and uh, get excited about what is happening and what they see happening, what they're doing to make it happen, and then it happens. Amy Ely, our director of STEM, has handled a lot of the curriculum and what's gonna happen once the building opens, which is a huge responsibility. The forward-looking plans, not looking five years into the future or 10 years, but what are we gonna need in 30, 50, 70 years? What do we anticipate being able to do in this space? But giving us the ability to be able to build our curriculum as time goes on and moves forward, as technology changes rapidly, 
All of that is going to be a huge advantage for us. Amy, from what's going to happen inside the classroom to the partnerships with how we're going to put all these great facilities to use, she's been absolutely critical. And again, to continue to reinvent ourselves every day, Amy's just done a, a fantastic job of doing that. All of the spaces here that are designated for robotics or a machine shop or a greenhouse, all of those things can pivot and be used for different purposes or have a different focus. For example, our CAD and computer programming lab in the upstairs area, and the 3D printers that we're bringing in are some that were recommended to us from industry. So they're industry standard, state-of-the-art printers. Further moving through the building, we have our immersive theater. It's great for lectures. It's great for esports tournaments, for people to view what's happening, because we can stream everything on the full 270-degree wrap around screen. Moving to another focal area of our building is our Observa Dome Tower that was custom made for us, sent up here in parts, assembled on site, and lifted into place. Watching all of that happen was amazing. And the thing that's inside of it is even more amazing. We have a super high powered Celestron telescope that can be completely digitally enabled. You can work it from your phone or you can be here looking up at the stars live and in person. One other area where Mr. Turek was incredibly impactful was encouraging us to check out aviation as a discipline here at Catholic Central. It's another tool in our toolbox at Catholic Central to, to provide these guys, these kids with, with, with you know, experiences that will set them up for you know, job opportunities in the future. Mr. Turek donated an FMX simulator from Redbird Flight Simulators. It's in its own standalone room and it's amazing. The simulator uh, and the courses that we develop for aviation, uh, we'll have kids who, you know, probably have their commercial license before they get out of high school, which is great. And our young men are excited to take to the skies. So we're gonna be world-class with our aviation suite, our robotics, um, 3D printing, CAD, graphic design, the greenhouse, astronomy. So I just love that there's something for everybody. George's philosophy, which we d agree with, is best practices. So what are the best practices out there? What are the best schools and even universities doing uh, for this type of facility? So we assembled a team and started to do that research. So we traveled um, literally all over the country looking at different schools, high schools and universities and trying to take best practices from each of those different schools. So one of the key universities we modeled our building after was the Hall of Science at Notre Dame. We looked at their Hall of Science, we duplicated many of the, uh, the items we saw and in George's word, he just wanted to make it a little nicer. Uh, that building kind of captured the character of what the team had set out to do, uh, partially from a STEM and technology standpoint, partially from an architectural standpoint, but then also from a faith and, and religious perspective. So really, I, I feel like the Notre Dame inspiration then was taken to a whole nother level. The groundbreaking was the first big step and having that ceremony to say, okay, we're really doing this. So it was a challenge to build the school adjacent to our current building. It's like remodeling your house while you're living in it. So a uh, big thank you to our school administration, our teachers for their patience and the students and, and our current families, uh, because it was challenging. It was a long process. And there's construction and there's facade getting ripped down and there's walls coming down. And so for our students to overcome that, um, our parents to allow it, um, it was just absolutely incredible and it just shows it was a total team effort, right? And um, the end is going to be absolutely beautiful, but there was a lot of hard work that went into it from a lot of different people. And you see the kids that come through, they're poking through the, their heads through the window and they're very interested in everything that's going on. So this is a large scale project which is going to bring its complexities and challenges naturally. But when you start it in the middle of COVID, right, there was a steel shortage with long lead time. So we had to make decisions as a team really fast so that we could keep to our timeline. 
Um, the ability to pivot as a team, as one cohesively is just super critical in a project like this. So quality again was just one of the foundation pillars of this project. They had the foresight to say, let's get the steel ordered early. If we had not done that, we may not be in the building right now. The other thing I remember is when they, they uh, when the steel frame went up, they hung the CC flag on top of the steel frame. Uh, that was a pretty cool uh, milestone in the project. The craftsmanship in this building is second to none. Um, from the masonry, to the wood, to the cabinetry, to the flooring with the terrazzo, it's a thing of beauty. Every element of this building has a lot of architectural stone, iconography, incredible brickwork. Uh, it's really uh, almost a piece of art. And one thing I've learned, you know, being in the classroom is you just never know what's gonna spark a kid's inspiration, curiosity, creativity, and get him inspired, right? We're really excited to see what type of construction and architectural awards this project wins. In the project, it's, again, you draw it up one way and as it starts to come to life, you see it uh, a different way. And the courtyard was uh, one of the big things. You know, Sandy has been, you know, the glue that's held this place together a lot of times with this project. And the courtyard was kind of her baby. And bringing it all together, having a very clear vision as to what the aesthetic needed to be in this building to make it timeless. You know, obviously we were tying into the existing school and it would have looked a little bit weird if you were standing in the courtyard originally of how we planned it, where you would see the brick of the new Hall of Science with the old brick of the school. And she called that out early on as we have to address that. And now it's just gonna be just an absolutely breathtaking courtyard from the crucifix, again, making sure our faith is still rooted in everything that we do to the religious iconography, to the fountain, to the fireplace. It's gonna be an awesome place for alumni to come back and have events. Um, the guys to stay before and after school, have some Wi-Fi out there, work together and just enjoy it. That now is just really going to be a staple of the building and one of those places where people walk in and they turn and see that fireplace and they see the fountain. They kind of, you know, their breath gets taken away. And then I think obviously finally uh, the hanging of the jet. That was just a whole different type of buzz. I mean, people, we probably should have been selling tickets for people to come and take a picture of it out front. And how can you not be inspired when the A4 jet that's just like the jet he flew in the Navy is hanging over our robotics arena in the big atrium? There was just a lot of great, cool moments along the way that I'll remember you know, now and into the future when we look back on this project. We knew that was going to be near the end, and so that's telling us we're very close now. And, and now I'm just looking forward to the dedication weekend. I am so excited as to what the future holds for us here in the Georgia Mary Turk Hall of Science because this STEM wing is only going to move forward into the future with the success and brilliance that was all made possible by one man having a vision. So it's our incredible donor base, our alumni. Obviously, George is the leader um, for this project and the things to come. It's those donors, the reason they do it is to make sure the foundation of CC stays alive and continues to get stronger, right? They, the reason they give back is because they love what the experience they had of CC 50, 60 years ago, 30 years ago, 10 years ago, right, for myself. They give back because they want to see CC stay alive. They're not trying to change the foundation. They're trying to build upon it so that we continue to evolve and again, raise the standard for ourselves now and into the future. We couldn't have done it without everybody's help. It's going to be the state of the art facility that everybody's going to talk about. And we, we deeply appreciate everyone who, who gave and supported this project. I'd very much like to thank Dan Collins and Ed Turek for getting JS Vig involved. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, George uh, Turek for, for making all of this possible. Uh, I'd, I'd like to thank Father Elmer for his vision. He set the tone for everything that was to come. For our academic administration, Father Fulton, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Hancock, thank you for supporting what sometimes seemed like a crazy girl's dreams for curriculum in this building. And 
I know that you're gonna see how successful that it's gonna help our Shamrocks become. These four walls are coming out of it is gonna be the next great leader of our country, the next great family man, leader in his parish, leader in corporate America, and we truly believe that. And that's why we do everything we can to make sure that they have the best so that we do continue to raise the standard, not just for ourselves, but society as a whole. Learn, you know, and, and follow, you know, our motto, you know, goodness, discipline, and knowledge, and uh, and uh, and spread that, you know, wherever they go. We'll continue to build out our campus because we want to give our students the best possible education possible, and give them the best facilities and technology to make them successful. So we're really excited with everything that's happening right now. We have a best-in-class facility that's about to open. But the one thing that I want everyone to make sure they know, you know, get your popcorn because we're just getting started. Our goal is to continue to graduate young men who go out in the world and make a difference and make the world a better place. Remember, the world's a better place with more shamrocks in it. Detroit Catholic Central thanks everyone in the shamrock community who contributed to this monumental achievement. God bless and go Shamrocks!